Good morning, folks. Welcome to another episode of Ben in 10 at 10 on every Monday, Wednesday and Friday here on Unlocked. Now, as some of you will know, I did a special broadcast on Saturday night in which I disclosed that Baroness Hoey, Jim Allister and myself had sent a letter before action to Brandon Lewis, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, over the Northern Irish Protocol. The purpose of the letter was to give the Secretary of State an opportunity to terminate, repudiate, ditch the Northern Irish Protocol and to replace it with a proper settlement for Northern Ireland that brings Northern Ireland into the United Kingdom again. As you might know, I have been campaigning against the Northern Irish Protocol really since the first day it was launched. And here's why. A cursory reading of that protocol makes it clear that Northern Ireland would be left behind in the European Union, subject to EU laws and subject to the supreme authority of the European Court of Justice, with a border down the Irish Sea, separated from Great Britain. And in that separation, in the different constitutional setup for Northern Ireland, the Prime Minister and those who did the deal with the European Union have effectively breached the Act of Union 1800, the 1998 Northern Irish Act, which gave effect to the Belfast Agreement and the Belfast Agreement itself. Article 6 of the Act of Union makes it absolutely clear that Northern Ireland should have unfettered access as part of the internal market of the United Kingdom. It also makes it clear that citizens in Ireland should be treated absolutely the same as citizens in Great Britain. There should be no differentiation between them. The Northern Irish Protocol makes a very significant differentiation. And we've seen the effects of it this year when it was implemented. We've seen the difficulty that people have had sending goods to Northern Ireland, pets to Northern Ireland, indeed trading with Northern Ireland in any sense. And this is just the beginning of it. We haven't really begun to experience the full effect. And that's for two reasons. There are some grace periods still running as far as the terms of the protocol are concerned, but also we haven't seen the EU exercise its might on Northern Ireland yet. We haven't seen the ECJ's full effect yet. It's early days, but this will come. We got a glimpse of the EU's attitude to the protocol in Northern Ireland on the 29th of January this year, when they invoked Article 16 of the protocol in an attempt to block life-saving vaccines from getting from the EU into Northern Ireland and thence to Great Britain. They did that because they have an absence of vaccines themselves in the EU. But in doing so, what they revealed that was, is that that whole narrative that there cannot be a border on the island of Ireland to be false. They revealed that even though they hijacked that process ever since we voted for Brexit, and together with the government of Ireland and some forces for Remain in the UK, they weaponized that border issue to use it as a, as a negotiating tool against the British government. They prevailed in using it as a negotiating tool. They got the UK completely tied up in knots over it. And Theresa May, her answer to it was the backstop. Prime Minister Boris Johnson's answer to it was a border down the Irish Sea something he said he would never do. Initially, Boris Johnson denied that there would be a border down the Irish Sea. He denied that Northern Ireland would be left behind to a very significant extent in the EU. But slowly as 2020 wore on, the details of that agreement got out. And in September last year, he launched the Internal Market Bill, a bill that he claimed as vital legislation to unpick some of the more pernicious aspects of the protocol. Sadly, that legislation was dropped without explanation sometime between September and December last year. We don't know why it was dropped. The, the, the necessity for it remained. It was important back in September. It remained important in December. But for reasons only known to himself, he dropped it. Then on the 9th of December 2020, Brandon Lewis sought to disapply the cross-community approval processes of the Northern Ireland Act 1998 and transpose into that act the approval processes in the withdrawal agreement under the Northern Irish Protocol. 
Now that might sound very technical, but it's really important to understand what he did. He effectively neutered the approval processes for a change to the constitution of Northern Ireland as set out in the Belfast Agreement. He did it trying to use a statutory instrument, something on which the Commons did not vote, and he did it really in a kind of cloak and dagger manner, behind closed doors where no one could really see what he was up to. But that move was a very serious move. It undermined the legislation that formed the foundation of the Belfast Agreement. And that is why Kate Hoey, Jim, Alistair and myself had no option but eventually to take legal action. It became utterly clear to us that this government has no intention of unpicking the Northern Irish Protocol. It has no intention of honouring the Act of Union 1800. It is driving a coach and horses through the Union of the United Kingdom. We've tried every political means to get the government to back down, but it simply has refused to do so. The new news this morning is that over the weekend, Jim, Kate and I have been working with pro-unionist leaders and politicians across Northern Ireland, and I'm pleased to say that we will be sending a joint letter to the Prime Minister today, reminding him of the letter before action that was sent to Brandon Lewis on Friday, and making it clear to the Prime Minister that if he doesn't act very soon and determinedly on the issue of Northern Ireland, judicial proceedings will be launched. I hope the Prime Minister reacts to the letter. I hope he does the right thing. But even if he doesn't, we are completely committed now to relying on the British judicial system. We're relying on it to act without fear or favour in order to protect the union of the United Kingdom. And no matter what the political disposition might be of the members of the judiciary, I am confident that they will set those aside in order to determine correctly that the, that the Northern Irish Protocol is a fundamental breach of the Union and should be set aside. The Prime Minister should actually welcome our action. It gives him the opportunity to set aside the false narrative which he inherited that Theresa May was unable to reject that there cannot be a border on the island of Ireland.